everybody, good morning and welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host and disembodied hands, Quindy, disembodied beard, John, and the universe, which is always hanging around. How are you all? I'm personally sick of how dark this model looks, so I'm going to do NMM today. <laughs> Coffee, is that what we're at? Ah, wrong button, wrong button. There we go. Hello, everyone. And what is with these startup glitches every day this week, Quindy? Twitch, come on. Twitch, you're killing me. Like, what the heck? So I was reading about um, creative resistance yesterday, which is the thing when you are ready to sit down and mini paint. Maybe you've been even thinking about mini painting all day. You're like all like psyched about it earlier in the day. And then when it actually comes down to it, suddenly there are all sorts of distractions and, uh, and you just distract yourself out of it and then you end up not painting at all. And uh, what, what that is, the, the term for that is uh, creative resistance. And it's interesting um, because the, the more you like, the more important getting done a thing is to you, the more likely you are to have it. And uh, a lot of us feel more of it when there's pressure. So when there's pressure, we actually act the way we shouldn't. So we run away from the task instead of toward it. And then we end up having to cram it into the last minute. Um, this is like competition. Yeah, it's very annoying. I agree. This is like, like can happen before competitions, right? You find yourself painting on the last day in the last hours before you have to enter the model because you've somehow avoided it. Even though it was important to you to do, you somehow avoided it in all of the weeks leading up to the competition and then bang, you have to get it done. Oh, it's on Reaper Live as well and on Round of Stream. Yeah. 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 It, that was the first one actually was my personal stream. But yeah. But anyway, um, there was some thinking in this article. It was by a um, psychologist who's known for kind of a holistic, uh, and by holistic, I don't mean like herbal medicine. I actually mean like, you know, like your body influences your mind and, your, and vice versa. And like your um, your own personal belief systems influence all of that and all that kind of stuff. So she's pretty, pretty well known for that. But her, um, she felt that or in her experience, the way to get around resistance was actually mindfulness. So like trying to be present in the moment is more likely to keep you headed for the miniature painting table and less likely to let all those distractions, which can then trigger your brain to go run and, and deal with them. Right. So less likely to do that. So if you really want to paint in the evening, but you notice you have this, especially when things are stressful or you're heading for a deadline or something like that, or competitions coming up, something that would normally make you go and mindlessly watch Netflix or, you know, binge video games instead of painting. Um, try to get yourself like, like kind of like focused in the moment, kind of feel what's around you. Don't let all that crap in your head, like jump to the forefront and distract you. Um, it definitely takes practice. Uh, it, there's a reason they call it a meditation practice, right? Um, because your brain want, is used to just chattering at you and distracting you, right? Your brain's like comfortable with that. Um, so anyway, that's kind of what I'm working on. I started working on it yesterday after I read this article. It made a lot of sense to me because usually I'm kind of just moving in a fog when this stuff happens. Like I'm in a fog and I'm like, oh, distraction, I have to deal with that. I won't be able to blah, you know. Yeah, Bryce. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You feel targeted today. <laughs> it's me too, though. It was always me too. Um, because my brain is the kind that when stress or tension hits, it wants to nope out and go do something completely unstressful. Like that's my brain. It's like, oh no, stress is bad. Let's just go over here. Even when the stress is positive, like the competition is coming and, you know, I should be motivated to work more on my project, you know, but I always, my brain has, is a huge noper. It nopes out at the drop of a hat. Um, so I've essentially been working on strategies to make myself better at this stuff. Uh, so yesterday, what I tried to do, um, because I notice in my whole mind, in my whole life, I get, I go through it really distracted, right? And that's not, that's not like good. Um, so I practiced yesterday just staying really present with Kiki and with David, which was an enjoyable experience. My brain was like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> So she recommends starting with really little things 
Um, because otherwise, if you if you try to change too much at once, and we've all had this experience when we've done diets or lifestyle changes that then, you know, regressed in, in a week or two, or a day or two, or an hour or two. <laughs> um, but starting with one small thing uh, can help. Just one small thing that you that you do. And then you just slowly build on that. So it's almost a habit stacking from that point. But yeah, so it was, it's interesting. It's very, I love, I love uh, uh, sharing my creative psychology stuff with you guys because I know we all go through this kind of thing. Oh, and take your allergy pill, Quindy. I need a Kleenex. <laughs> it's rainy today here. It's little bits of rain that come and go. And so my allergies are just like, Arr! they were so happy yesterday when it was drier. But now we're in for another few uh, days of wetness, I think. Oh, yeah, Shadow Raven. <laughs> yeah, see, everybody feels seen because, like, this is a thing. And I mention resistance in the PDF I just put out for my $10 tier. It is the big daddy. It is the thing that most often keeps everybody creative from doing the things they'd love to do. Um, and it feels so weird because you want to do the thing. You want to do the thing. You're inspired to do the thing. And then, whoa, suddenly you don't do the thing. And then at the end of the night, you're like, why didn't I do the thing? I wanted to do the thing, you know, and then you make excuses. You're like, oh, but this thing came up. But in reality, it was your brain making chatter to distract you because there was pressure, right? There's usually a little bit of pressure sitting down. Is this thing going to work? Is it going to be a good painting night? Or am I just going to get frustrated? Especially if you've had those moments in painting before where you've failed to execute to like, like if you have high expectations of yourself or if you've just been dissatisfied with your progress in mini painting. You know, a lot of us have had that. I've had that from time to time too. I've gone through all of this stuff, guys. My, my journey, I think everything I talked about in that PDF, I've gone through at some point or another. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yes, it's my fault the snow is coming to Reno. But wait, doesn't that help the skiing? Isn't, isn't like, isn't Tahoe like just beyond Reno? I guess it doesn't make sense. Like, you know, you don't, you don't directly benefit from the snow. You would rather have springtime. 99% <laughs> sniffles, 1% person today. I feel like that too. But yeah, so I found this was interesting. I'm going to test it. I'm going to, I'm going to put this person. I always like test things for myself, right? I'll read a thing and my brain will go, oh, that sound, that makes sense. And I'm like, but let's test it. Um, so I am, I am testing being mindful to see or trying to be more mindful in little moments to see if it helps me be more mindful in general to see if that helps me commit to my creativity. You know, because yeah. So it's a thing. It's a thing. But yeah, so that's that's a tactic. If you're, if you're inclined, I know some people just go poo-poo mind, mindfulness, but um, if it is uh, something you've always wanted to try, to do like little bits of meditation throughout the day, being aware in the present moment is an easy one because all you have to really do is focus on the details of what's in front of you. And as mini painters, it's easy for us to do that. We're used to focusing on details, right? <laughs> so like, instead of just half listening to David, like talk about his work, I focused in and like became present and fully listened to David talk about his work, right? And it was, it was very nice. It was like, it was nice. It was relaxing in a weird kind of way because my brain kind of shut down and all I was doing was being there. Um, so yeah, little tactics like that can help. There's a lot of us just, I mean, I know, I know I just barrel through life buzzing like a bee, like my whole mind is full of buzz. Yeah, yeah, well, which is why it's so valuable to you, to people like you, right, Kodiak, though? Like, because mindfulness is something that, like, shuts off the worry spigot for just a second, right? Even if you succeed, and in, in, in that case, if you tried to do it, and even if you get a second of it where your brain shuts up, I would, I would celebrate that as a victory. Like, I totally would. Um, because I also am a worrier. I'm, I'm a worry anticipator, where I'm like, oh, something's coming, I have to prepare for it, even though it may never happen. I'm that kind of worrier. But yeah, mindfulness is hard for everybody. Don't make no mistake. We all have our little things. Um, and that's, but that's why it's worth practicing because it can help. It can help with those things. Uh, but yeah, even with, with this, like it was hard for me to stay focused last night when I was trying to like be really present with Kiki and be really present with David. Um, you know, my brain kept wanting to wander off and, and worry about a thing or, or think about a thing or plan a thing or do something like all the crap my brain likes to do. Mostly it was worrying about my doctor appointment today. And uh, 
it was like, it, it was just, yeah, it was just really hard. <laughs> so, so I don't say this lightly. I know it's difficult, but if it can help, you know, I like, I like to try to like get better at stuff. I'm, I'm really right lately. I'm really going back and forth with my eating patterns. And, uh, this is something I think may help. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. You can all, you can all throw it out the window if you don't, if you don't uh, care or it's not your thing. Uh, all right, let's do some NMM. I really want to get some brighter stuff on this model. I'm, she's very dark and, uh, And although I'm putting the lighter feathers in, I'm going to be putting lighter horns uh, and that's going to help. Uh, I'm probably going to have to lighten the scales a little bit more as well because she's got a lot of darks on her. She's, if you look at her, she looks very brooding right now. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if worrying didn't do something for us, we would have stopped doing it, right? Like if worrying didn't somehow help us in some weird kind of way, or in your case, in a very functional kind of way, like it wouldn't be there. We wouldn't be doing it, you know? But yeah, being present, especially with, with my loved ones, um, is more important to me lately. So I felt like when I was, when I had my other dogs, especially, I felt like I was, I was just like, kind of like skimming over the surface of life because it was so stressful. That was when my marriage was not the greatest and all this kind of thing. And, uh, and I don't want to do that with my current dog and my current husband, right? I want to, I want to be engaged with them. I want to listen to them. I want to be, be there with them. So David and I actually had a really, really good talk last night. I don't think I ever said that once about my past 10 years in my other marriage. Seriously. To, sh to give you an idea. And if I hadn't been present, I wouldn't have had that opportunity. So anyway, enough with this serious talk. Let's get to painting. Yeah, we'll see. The The gold should pop. And that's why I want to do it next, Shadow Raven. That's exactly, you exactly nailed down my the math, um, method behind my madness. Uh, I really, really want to uh, to get a better idea now. And this is, uh, I'm going to talk about this actually in my next month's PDF, which talks about the different way to start a mini. And one of them is, although we've, we haven't quite done this with this mini, but one of them is, you know, the base coat everything first. And one of the traps you can fall into with that is that uh, it's hard to see your light dark balance. It's hard to see your value scale because a lot of us will start slightly darker and work up from there. Um, and maybe you start in the mid for some colors or you start dark for others and it causes, you know, like a whole model that looks like it's just in the mid. It makes it very difficult to really get an idea how everything's going to balance out when you're in the middle of the model. Um, and this model, you, the reason that this model ended up base coated like this where before I was even close to done with a lot of it is because I was hesitant about, you know, where am I going with this? Like this model, I just kind of like, kind of felt out with my gut and we had to make some changes, right? We had the light belly originally and we decided to go dark instead, or I did. Um, and so yeah, I like your feather rings too. It's quirky. Um, and, but because of that, you can, uh, you can get like a really, really lose like the feel for how light or dark or, or how much, um, value contrast you have on the figure and value contrast at 28 millimeter is very important. It becomes much less important as models get larger. It still can be very, a very nice way to like pop, pop the model and make all this, all the parts stand out as you get larger, but it's super important with little figures where you're trying to really push the contrast on everything. So every tool that you can utilize on 28 millimeter, you should use, um, you want to use those, right? So contrast from part to part is part of that. So when I'm looking at this, it frustrates me because I don't get a sense of my balance yet. So that's why, that's why we're doing this. Um, I think for shadows, I'm actually going to go with a slightly lighter shadow instead of using like straight brown liner. I'm going to use my russet brown, except of course I didn't shake it up adequately beforehand. Silly me. Um, 
I'm going to use my russet brown mixed with just a little bit of brown liner. If I need, if I don't want to go super dark with a shadow, but I still want it to be dark enough on gold NMM, this is a mix I like. It makes it really warm a shadow for the gold. Let's go back a bit. My palette is out of range. There we go. So hopefully that was good enough. Yeah. So I'll do like three drops of russet. Then I'll throw a drop of brown liner in there. It'll darken down the russet um, and make it a little more translucent, but it'll keep it at a very warm shadow. So that's what I'm looking at. Do, do, do. And I'll put a, drop, a couple drops of water in that. Russet is decently high coverage, um, even if the brown liner is not. Uh, and I want this to blend, especially on these big areas like the shields. So I'm going to make it a little thinner. So that gives me a dark brown. That should be dark enough. If not, I can bring in a tiny touch of dark of brown liner here and there. Um, or I can just add another drop of brown liner to drive it a little darker. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, I started doing the same thing, Kodiak. Oh yeah, it actually wasn't on this. Um, I think it was on my personal one. I think that was on my Storm Priest for the D and D game that we did ages ago. I'm pretty sure it was him. I don't have him around right now. He's in, I think, the other room, or he's in my box of D and D figures. But yeah, it was a Storm Priest that I did that with. So it wouldn't be on any. It wouldn't be on this. Although I guess, I don't know, did we work on an M on this stream? I didn't think we did. Maybe we did though. I didn't think so, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we did do it. But it was a priest. It was um it was the guy with the hammer held down, big swoopy cloth, Bobby Jackson, older sculpt. Um, but he was a priest for sure, and I did him as a storm priest with that amount, with that uh, particular lineup of colors. Hey there, Laura. There we go. All right. So let us transport some of this yellow over and we'll bring it up lighter. But yeah, I don't remember the name of the figure, but it's a mustachioed um, Bobby Jackson priest. Would have been a long time ago, like 2020. Was we would that was back in pandemic land for sure. We were in our old apartment when I worked on that model. 2020 or early 2021. Yes, and I think I did actually finish him on stream. I think that Crows is right. Um, I added a little bit more lantern yellow to this. I'm bringing it up with some white. But yeah, after after the game, it actually I think I finished that model on the on the stream here because it was Reaper, so I could, or at least we worked on it. I don't remember. It was a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. So then my last color is going to be the pure white. So really, I'm dealing with an NMM Gold Triad, and if you look at these colors that I'm using, you'll see they are very close to the Reaper NMM Gold Triad, which we did keep. Uh, which I recommended keeping, by the way. Um, uh, but you can see that the rich leather is very close to the NMM gold shadow. It's maybe a little lighter, a little warmer, um, because I want this gold to be lighter. Uh, the color that I mixed here with the rich leather plus the lantern yellow is very close to the NMM gold midtone base. And then this color that I mixed with a combination of this and more lantern yellow and white is very close to NMM gold highlight. So, yeah. Yeah, I tried to keep some of the more unique stuff. Um, but again, this is just recommends that I recommended. So we, we don't know if Reaper's going to listen to me when it comes time to cancel. But I think the NMM Gold Triad is very useful. And it, and as it is, like, super close to what I use personally for Gold NMM. So I tend to mix just because I can rather than reaching for the Triad. But... It's very close. Yeah, 
There we go. So we've got a pure white. So then we've got our five colors for NMM gold. Um, with the end two really just being a, you know, shadow and highest highlight. And the three in the middle being probably the most important. But again, um, when you're doing NMM gold, if you are using the NMM gold triad that Reaper has, you'll want to add a darker shadow. So this is a great base and then moving up from that, great, but you will need to use pure white at one end and you will need to add a shadow at the other. Often, like I said, I use just brown liner for the shadow. Today, I'm gonna be using, I think I'm gonna darken it one more drop. Today, I'm using a mixture of brown liner and russet brown because I want a slightly lighter shadow. I don't want it to be too dark. If I'm going lighter with my gold, I can get away with a slightly lighter shadow. There we go. So that's a four or a three, three to two russet to brown liner. They actually do, or they, yeah, they do Shadow Raven. Um, that's why I mentioned that like the package triads may go away. I don't know if they will or not. I wanted to talk to Ron about that because if he needs me to, I can, if, if they adopt my, my, uh, my input, then I can, and even if they don't, I could probably help them put together new triads if they really want to keep triads. But I'm not sure if they do or not. It takes up a lot of room and stocking. So, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll ask. All right, let's get some of this stuff figured out. I think I uh, I also recommended uh, keeping the vampire skin triad. Uh, pretty much all the weird monster skins, both from the regular line and from Ron's... Um, Dungeon Dwellers six packs, just because they're unique. They're unique and they're unlike other colors and they have utility because um, D and D gamers are always looking to paint monsters. So if you can give them a color for those monsters, then that can be a pretty good move. So here on these big sloping surfaces, I tend to do a gradient. I'll do white at the top, I'll do a shadow right under it, and then I'll blend it up to another highlight out here. Even though this is all facing up, it just means I'm going to make the overall surface lighter, but I still need some dark up here or I'm just not gonna get the look I want. So it's kind of, again, we're making a choice between stylism and realism to make something you know, look cool, even if it's not strictly correct. Yeah, okay, slightly cheaper to buy buy the triad over buying the individuals, yeah. Thanks, Quindy. So do a little bit of a highlight right up there. You guys can see it. Boop. I'm gonna put it in the shadow. Often I put in the shadow first. It just depends on how I'm feeling about a particular area. If I wanna block in shadow first or highlights first. So put that little dark in there, give us a gradient. I am gonna edge around the outside of this, just like uh, I always call it the Sergio trick. It's something you see a lot on bigger models. And sometimes on little models, trying to do all the white edging doesn't carry off as well. Um, so you kind of have to try it and, and like make your judgment call. I find if I keep my paint thinner and keep the line more subtle that it can work. And I'll use the edge of my brush. And I might not do the entire thing. I might actually like not do it around the shadow part, but only around the, uh, the outsides here. And then I need to bring up that highlight. Yeah, so that, that doesn't look bad. It's a little understated. I didn't want it to be too bad. I want to um, throw some water into this highlight color though, since it does have a significant white in it. It's going to be very hard to layer unless I thin it way down. Oh, well, that's right. We have to do the 90 day challenge um, mini. I want to do it in 90 days. So uh, maybe we'll do, maybe we'll sub, uh, I guess we're almost done with Ed. I was gonna throw the big, big Sophie Druid in for Ed though. So maybe we'll sub for the mouselings. Maybe we'll throw um, Elquin in for that. I need to prep him. Duh, crows.
If you want a great um, addition to those colors, Ashen Brown is also a very good vampiric skin base for the shadows. We put it back out with a Kickstarter after it got canceled. It's like a lighter Volcano Brown, but it is very, very good for vampires. So now we can see the light coming up, right? So now we're, we're, at, we're at a good place with this particular anime. Cool, seriously. There's a little chip here, so I'm gonna actually bring a little bit of dark in. It looks actually like there's a couple of little dents here, sculpted, little scratches. So I can bring those out with some liner slash russet. And then I can accentuate them by taking some of my white and kind of underlining them. And you always want to underline when you're trying to bring out scratches um, because the light's going to fall down and hit that the bottom of the two edges. It's going to glance off the top of the one and then kind of hit the bottom, especially on a curved area like this. So getting those little bits of emphasis in like so. So you can see close up that we don't have a perfect blend, but it is good enough to look really good when you back out. So that's really, really where we're at. But sets aren't, that's the thing. Yeah, I don't know, like sets are weird. If there are sets of colors that are all in release, it might be better. But I have no idea. I just know that the thing about sets, and actually I remember Ed talking about this at one point in a meeting, is that sets of existing colors are low hanging fruit and you should just put out, like you should put out the set anyway because you've already got all the stock. So it's not like you can't toss together, a, you know, just keep a very low stock of pre-built on the sets and then just toss them together when you need them. That was Ed's feeling about it. But you can get a little bit overcommitted there if you've got a lot of different sets and they're really not moving very fast because then that will still take up room. So. Doing the customers also buy thing takes a lot of additional programming, I'm pretty sure, Kodiak. So I'm not certain that our site has that capability or how long it would take to program a site that had that capability because you'd have to have the data and then you'd have to like find a way to to build that engine. It would seem to me it would seem to me to require an entire website rework for that. I could be wrong. But there's a reason you see that on Amazon, but you don't often like see a very effective like some stores have done it, like big brands. Big brands have um, reworked their sites to do recommends like that. I don't know what it would take. It just seems, it seems like that was one of the things that was always pulled out as unique, um, as something that Amazon had, had pioneered that wasn't like an easy thing to do, so. Yeah, right. Right, yes, yeah, that's the problem. You can't get individuals right. That's why it makes more sense to just create sets out of existing colors in a way that makes logical sense. The thing that hangs up on that then though, and I speak from experience, is that you know unless you have some resources to show people why these things go together and how to use them together, it tends to fall a little flat, right? Like that's, that's what that's the kind of thing that, that we always wanted to do, but never really had time to do. Because like I said, I, I was the logical choice to do it. That's why sometimes, you know, having the, when we did, um, oh, what was it? When we did the different different models each month and like Rhonda or Derek or me would do a, a how to paint these kind of article or how we painted the thing. 
Um, like that kind of resource is the thing that Reaper always wishes it had more time to do. So I'm gonna do a little shadow here. You can see me putting a very dark shadow on the underside, bringing that up. So yeah, there's always like infinite, Reaper should do this, Reaper should do that. I wonder if they could do this. And the answer is usually not, you know, not tied to, to actual mechanics. It's simply tied to the manpower and the time to have someone do that, someone who can do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that having some sets is just a smart idea. I agree with you, Shadow Raven. Yeah, that's kind of why I kept both NMM sets because I figured that that was a good six color NMM set, right? And But ideally, even with that, you would have some sort of resource, either a video online or a PDF or something that if you buy that set, you can go to to see how to use those colors, right? Things like, like I just said, where, well, in addition to the NMM gold trad, you also want a darker shadow. And you still have to use pure white, right? Like that kind of thing, a new person isn't going to understand. They aren't going to know that automatically. You need to educate. But that's where that's where things can get dicey, just because you maybe don't have the time and resources to create that those IP, you know, those those properties. All right, so we got that going on. Yes, the Dungeon Dwellers Paint Guides. If you aren't familiar with them, they are some of the... They're, they're the only time I can remember, except for long, long ago, that Reaper actually had the time um, and impetus to get a bunch of us to do those. Uh, they're really valuable. Um, definitely still still uh, totally usable. I liked mine because I talked about different ways to base coat and the differences in it. I had fun with my goblins. I only did one of them. And I only did one of them because of my time, like being so constrained because of the paint department. So. Ain't nobody got time for that. Like I tried crows once, like I tried, I wrote tiny blurbs for some of the power palette paints, but I just like, I ran out of oomph. Like I just couldn't, like I had too much to do. There's another Nick in her shield right here, so we're going to emphasize that. Hey, Twisted. Yeah, I mean, would this stuff be great? Yes, it would. <laughs> yes, it would. Don't think that we don't know. Don't think that Reaper doesn't know that that stuff would be really great to have. But it's just who you, how are you going to get and who are you going to get and when are they going to do it? It's always, Reaper's focus has always been on the core manufacturing, right? and much less on the IP how-to side. And that's probably because, like, until I came along, Reaper didn't have a lot invested in paint, right? So in the hobby, so to speak. Reaper was selling miniatures, and that's what they did. Um, that changed over the years a little bit. Like, but for the most part, that's still, that's still the main... You know, all of us in the painting hobby are, are probably the minority and the people buying minis for RPGs that are just kind of throwing some paint on and playing, but playing is their main focus. Those are still probably the majority. I don't know for sure though. It's hard to see. Right, exactly, yeah. It would be, so that's what I feel like. But, but the thing about the Reaper YouTube channel is that it isn't like my YouTube channel, which is actually what drove me to do more with my YouTube channel, right? The Reaper YouTube channel has a lot of Twitch stuff that is kind of organized, but it's not like, I want to know how to use brown liner. Where's the video for that, right? There is none. That's why I want to do it on, I decided finally to just do some of that stuff on my own channel because I'm like, I'm the one who's qualified to talk about it more than anybody. And I'm doing YouTube, so it just makes sense to throw in some of that, and then Reaper can just use it. They don't have to worry about it. It just becomes a part of my collection, and uh, everybody benefits. 
So again, we're doing, remember, we're doing, you can see what I'm doing. It's going to be a, the, the white highlight, the shadow underneath, and then we're going to blend up. And this is the very simplest way. It's not necessarily the most accurate way, but it is the simplest way to do NMM on flat surfaces like this shield. Um, and NMM in general, for that matter, is, is look at your top. Your, your white highlight goes up there, a strong white highlight, and I'll go through it over and emphasize these a little bit more too. Um, and then right under it goes a shadow, and then you blend up to another highlight, under which goes another shadow, blend up to another highlight, under which goes another shadow, blend up to another highlight. Boom, 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 all around. Easiest, like I said, not the most accurate, but for 28s, it's okay. As you, as you paint larger figures, you may find that it benefits you to take a slightly more complex um, attitude towards your NMM. And certainly you don't have to do it this simple. Like I said, you can, you can do the alternating bands of light and dark. That's, that's the next step. Once you have this whole, once you've got the mindset of this, the highlight, shadow, blend back up, highlight, shadow, blend back up, highlight, shadow, blend back up. Once you have that down, then you can start working with like those alternating bands of light and dark that Sergio makes look so good and other painters, um, you know, that we do do on some other models, um, you, you know, that you do on swords. But when you are starting out with NMM, this is your basic, your basic. And what this teaches you is just the concept that you must have the pure white. You must have the shadow next to it. It's the only way you're going to get that shiny feel. Right. Well, I think when you're painting large amounts of figures for armies or tabletop, that's just the way it goes, HM. I mean, even I, even I would paint in batches for like my Tyranid army. I tend to paint in very small batches because of my time constraints and energy constraints, but still, I don't do like top level work on my little termagants. I do enough work that I'm happy with them and they're cute. <laughs> that's about it. Um... But if you're ever doing NMM, this is the way I think you start. This is the concept, the set of concepts that you think about. When you, once you have this down and internalize, then go looking at, okay, well, we need to make all our upper surfaces lighter and we need to make all our, you know, these surfaces are going to be more dark or mid. And, and then I'm going to do all, you know, bands to show that there's light interruption and make it look really cool and, you know, really pop my highlights and, you know, make my shadows really dark and all the rest of this stuff that you can do with NMM. Um, and then do some patterns and da, 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 da. Yeah. But first, first thing you need to understand is the passage from highlight to shadow up to highlight again. Right, the majority of people generally are not interested in unfocused VODs, yes, yes. But I don't want to sit and do a bunch of videos for Reaper if I could do them for my own YouTube and kill two birds with one stone. So that's what I'm doing. I would do them for Reaper if I was getting paid for it. Like it would just, but it would take that. Like I would need to, I would need to somehow fit an extra um, amount of time into my, my monthly schedule to do that sort of thing. Um, putting out five pieces of content for the Patreon every month plus YouTube videos is already stretching me, um, making things, it's making things tight. It's doable, but tight. Like that's why some months I only get two YouTube videos out and some months I get three. But it's all, it's all contributing and I'm not in a hurry. So yeah, it makes sense to make a little bit more on the front row, especially if you're doing like, like when I was painting Warhammer Fantasy, your front row would always have your standard bearer, your musician and your, and your hero, right? Your basic leader. And maybe you had five models across, so you would just paint two mooks and your command center um, and give a little bit of extra love to them. And that made a lot of sense to me. Uh, those models are going to stand out anyway. And I guess with 40K, you do the heavy weapon squad and your leader maybe, right? You'd spend a little more time on them because they're going to be more in the forefront. <clears throat> but yeah, that's totally a, a valid tactic. 
I don't know. I've been, my brain has been golden demoning a little bit more lately and I'm thinking about starting a model. It takes me a little while to like build up enough like anticipation, excitement, oomph kind of thing for GD. Cause I started a model and then I just was not really thrilled with it. And then I dumped it and yeah, I may go back to it. We'll see. But I've been letting kind of, uh, letting myself kind of dwell on like, okay, what would I really, what models am I really looking forward to painting? And it helps that David is working on those Skaven because it makes me actually want to paint styrene models because everything is so nice and smooth. And I'm like, it would be kind of fun to do that. So when I start having those thoughts, that's the time to like, think about starting a golden demon entry. And I'd be going full GW style on it. Unlike David, unlike David, who's trying to get close enough to GW style to, to get through the, the gauntlet. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go full. I'm going to go full on GW, <laughs> full frontal GW. All of the smooth blending. Yeah, I know, Bryce. I want to get back in. I want, I want a new demon. I want to, I will admit it. I want a new demon. Maybe I, maybe this will be part of my therapy because, um, I have a competitive self, like I do have an urge for competition, but I've, I've like really squashed it, um, for many, many years because I didn't like, I didn't like aspects of that part of myself. And I don't know if that was me or if it was, you know, you know, culture. Cause you know, when I was younger, girls weren't supposed to be competitive. Um, I didn't, whatever the case, I really squashed it. And maybe um, I've been kind of thinking about that and how it probably didn't do me any favors. And maybe I should just let my competitiveness out of the bag again and kind of just learn how to moderate it. It's disappointment when it doesn't win. <laughs> um, I just found it so much easier to just take the, take the whole attitude of not caring if I win. Um, but that's not really true to myself. Right. And, and, and being competitive can be a good spur to get things done for competition. So yeah, I've been going back and forth about this stuff. As we all know, I'm into self-helpery and I'm into like being the best Anne I can be. And so this is part of me that I've lately realized that maybe I could, uh, come to terms with me and my competition. <laughs> Full frontal GW Ann. <laughs> yeah, new term. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's, it's true, Shadow Raven. I, I do the same and I have to remind myself, no, just do the simple. And then if I have to like, let myself get a little bit more in, I'll do a little bit more on like the faces or something, right? All right, so that looks pretty good. We've got our, our white lines. Again, I'm not taking the white lines all the way up. Um, once I get in on these edges, though, we will be doing the white lining here. So, I mean, it will end up aligned eventually. Now, down here in the bottom, when we turn away from the light, we're still going to have a shadow, a big shadow right under there. And we are going to bring our highlights up, but this time we're not going to go up to white. Um, when you've got any light down here, you, it's going to be reflected light. And it's not generally going to be as bright as light coming from above. It's going to be reflecting off the environment. So we will keep that in mind. And that also means that all of these dents and scratches and nicks in the shield on this lower edge are going to be done kind of in reverse. So instead of having that highlight be on the bottom of the, the nick, it's going to be on the top here because the light is going in opposite direction. Yeah, I mean, I've had like, models picked out for a while. I just haven't like committed Kodiak. I need to, I need to embrace my inner competitive and to get motivated because it, it is a lot of work, smooth blends and all that. When you've got people that are crazy good at them, like you do in uh, Golden Demon, it can be uh, can take be a long, painstaking process. But I do have a model I really love, so. Yeah, yes. And actually the, but I don't have to mind is entirely resistance. It's just your subconscious being happy with where you're at and your subconscious doesn't want to change because change is uncomfortable. As we all know, we all have a love hate relationship, sometimes a more hate than love relationship with change, but our brains love to get comfortable. They love to be in habits. They love to be able to predict things. 
Um, and that works against us. And so that, that I don't have to is entirely that section of your brain that likes to be comfortable and not change things up. And that's why this, um, that's why I really like this lady is writing about it, pointing out that you really just need to make small changes at a time, because if you don't, the, I don't have to portion of your brain is going to freak out and like come down on you like a ton of bricks going, you don't have to. Um, whereas if you make a tiny change, then it's a lot easier. It still takes a little bit of willpower, but it's, it's a lot easier. Like for my, for me, my first little change on my diet is, um, I used to grab a snack like between stream and going out to take Kiki for a walk. Ooh, it's brush Jay. Big blue bird is back. Um, I used to grab a snack. I don't need that snack. I'm not hungry yet. So my first, my first little action is just not to reach for the snack before I take Kiki for a walk. And that's a very small thing. And it's, you know, I'm still fighting against the habit of doing it, so it's not easy, but it's, it's certainly doable. It's certainly a very doable small thing. And no, I don't have to, but I want to, so. But yeah, it's, um, that's what stops a ton of people on like diet and exercise and all that. Remember, we're doing our light on the other side of these little dashes. Um, is that, uh, that fight between the, the, the urge, the, the wants to improve, the wants to, uh, to embrace, uh, uh, maybe a new you, a new philosophy, a new, new lifestyle. And then the part of you that just wants to stay stuck in the mud. And it's, it's just what is like, there is no way around it. So other than just kind of through it. So just know that we all are there with you, Shadow Raven. You have company. We're all like our stupid brains. Stupid, stupid brains. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Well, good, 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 good. Yeah, breaking habits is hard. Really hard. All right, oh, that's the red, right, okay. Do, 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 do. So I'm gonna do, let's see here, I want some under, under highlights, so let's get some light going in here. Now the lighting is gonna be stronger toward the bottom and it's gonna fade as we go up. It's the opposite of up here. Except that we do run into another shadow band here. But we're kind of reversing it, right? So our, our highlight is here and then it goes up to, up to a shadow. So it's shadow and then we're still going up to a highlight, just not as bright. Yeah, if you're fighting habits, then um, all the support and love, Shadow Raven. Habits, uh, fighting, fighting habits sucks. I'm hopeful but that beneath, between the mindfulness practice and the, uh, the small, small steps practice, um, I will manage to somehow eventually enact real change. All right. I feel like I need a little bit darker here. I need a little bit lighter going down there. You having luck? Yeah, I know. You've been making really good progress, Kodiak. I'm proud of you. You should be proud of you. All of the hearts. It's not easy. I just get so happy when I see my friends like acting and changing their habits for the better. It inspires everybody around you. That's the great thing about what you're doing right now, Kodiak, is that by showing them that it's possible and by showing them that you can be happy with it, you inspire others. That's the best. I think as sometimes I think that ins inspiring other people is one of the greatest gives, gifts we can give people. Pretty sure that's why my CrossFit coaches are CrossFit coaches. Andrew, at least. Just highlighting a little bit here. And I'm using my lighter yellow 
um, mixed with just a tiny bit of white to edge. So I'm highlighting, but I'm not bringing it up to a pure white like I did on the upper surfaces. That's a little clunky, so we can grab a little bit more of our other colors and blend it in a bit. Just because things start out clunky doesn't mean you have to cover them all up and um, go back to the drawing board. It just means you have to tune them a little bit. In my case, I might glaze over a little bit of that line to take it down a little bit. Maybe an overall glaze. Oh, that's awesome, Kodiak, that your wife has started. Oh, that's really good, Kodiak. Yay, keep going, keep going. Yes. Right, yeah, because this is never like, it's never the monster you're expecting. It's always like some other monster that's just been disguised as the monster you were expecting. Our psyches are so weird. It's like our brains are, are mimics. <laughs> They're like, I'm going to pretend that this is the problem, but really it's something else, and you won't find that out until you try to fix the problem that you think you have and find out that you don't, that actually it's something else. Maybe this is why everybody really loves mimics, is because deep down inside we know, we know that we, we are our own internal mimics. Just a little bit more light down there. It's it these actually these slashes make it much more complicated than it would normally be because I have to work around these little guys. To make that blend. But it's also on the underside of a shield, so if I really feel like I like I've not quite nailed it, but I'm sick of it, um, we can just say, okay, we're good enough. But there we go. That actually doesn't look bad, so I think we're all right. Yep, yeah, well, if you know it, that's step one, right? I'm, I don't know, I'm embracing this whole concept of teensy changes. Te teensy changes for the win. I just have to apply it to my, um, my painting a little bit. David wants me to start playing Le League of Legends with him, which means that if I am going to work on a Golden Demon project, I'm probably going to have to make like a half hour during my normal day to do it. Just a little touch. So let's back out. Got shinies that are starting to go on. I think we'll do the front of the shield. So this is flat with a very small curve, right? Got to see that, see that curve? So when you see that curve, you're gonna go about this differently than if it was a flat shield. Flat shields are actually really hard. Um, you almost have to oversimplify and just do dark and then bring it back up to light at the bottom. But when you've got this curve, that means that this is part of a cylinder, which means that the light is actually gonna be falling more down the middle um, where that curve kind of peaks. So we have to think about it that way. Twisted Oma, that only, you know, it, it works for some people, but it doesn't work for everybody. Um, for some people, imagining the future just kind of falls flat. It really depends. Like for me, uh, if, if I imagine a future me, like it doesn't really do much for me. If I imagine myself successfully doing something in the future, sometimes that can help. It's kind of a weird little distinction. Um, so anyway, so since this is a cylinder, we're gonna have most of our light coming down, probably down through the middle here. She's holding it at an angle and that doesn't help. 
um, but we'll do it at a slight off probably. And we will still have more highlight here and we still will have an under reflection over here. Although I can see that I've got, do I have a mold line there? It's really hard to make out. We'll just paint, paint it and find out. Yeah, it can be pretty toxic. It appears lately. I mean, but so can Overwatch. I play Overwatch. And the, the reason, the way that everybody gets around it is apparently to just not talk in chat at all, except for pinging, um, which is just like Overwatch. So I told David I would try it out. I mean, it's something we can play together. Yeah, I believe it, Kodiak. It's definitely not a safe zone with some of these games. We've also got some um, some little details here that are going to make our NMM a little bit more complex in that we've got kind of a little bevel in the metal uh, here. So yeah, this is this is actually much more complex shield than we than we think. So let's start. I'm going to start by just getting some light. And I'm not going to use white. I'm actually going to use my light yellow. And I'm going to kind of map out where I think my highlights are. And it also, because it's not, because this is a pattern across the front of the shield, that makes it even harder. Because we don't have just a central like blend that we can do. And these are in bevels. Yeah, this is weird. All right. This is challenging. It's a very challenging um, thing to NMM. I'm gonna bring this up. Okay, so we're gonna, when in doubt, when you've got a really complex surface, go back to the basics I just talked about. You've got a highlight. We're gonna have a shadow right here underneath because there's a bevel here on this part. We'll probably have a shadow there. We'll bring it down and highlight it. We'll probably do another shadow. And we'll bring this into a highlight that into a highlight. So we're going to alternate. So highlight, shadow, bring it back up. Highlight, shadow, bring it back up. Highlight, shadow, bring it back up. See? So you can do this in a micro way as well as in this macro big way. Yeah, I, I mean, it seems like a fun little game. I'm sure I'll die a lot because, you know, I've never played it before and I'm, I've never played. The one time I played a game like this, I played Heroes of the Storm, the, the Blizzard version, which is, and I just hated it. I absolutely hated it. So I told David I would give, I would give League of Legends a chance, but I warned him that, that in the past I had hated this kind of game. So, but I'll try it. I'll try it for him. It's the least I can do for my, my hubby. I'll give it a chance. I'm gonna just make these guys lighter and see what I can do. All right, so I've got some direct light here. Here is a little bit harder. Here I'm gonna be going kind of in line with what I've got here. Hmm. Yeah, this is uh, just kind of figuring out how I can alternate light and shadow. When you've got filigree or other things like this, you just kind of have to look at it at, okay, where's, where's it, where's there an obvious highlight in shadow? So here we've got this bevel. So this is an obvious highlight in shadow. Then I got to work up to highlight. So that means highlight, shadow, work up to highlight, highlight, shadow, work up to highlight, right? Shadow, work up to highlight, shadow, work up to highlight. So as long as that's why I said about if you've got these concept, this concept in, in mind, you can adapt that to almost any surface to make it look decent. Oh, PM draw. Yeah. If they're tiny, I guess it depends. This is about, uh, 40 mil, no, 35, 36 millimeters. So. It depends on how tiny when you're, when you're painting really small stuff, like you like 20 millimeter, um, for some war games are, they're very tall, very small. Some of the techniques I use here won't work for something very, very small. Um, but if you're painting something between 25 and 40 millimeters, probably fine.
Yeah, I still enjoy Overwatch. I just ignore the chat and don't, uh, and I don't join voice chat. I just, I just play. It's the best way I've done it. I used to join chat in competitive Overwatch when I first, I, when I first played Overwatch, I actually did queue for competitive. But now it's more like um, competitive games last twice as long because you have two rounds, offense and defense. So I just don't have the time. I'd rather just play a bunch of quick play games. Where people are usually a lot more chill anyway because it's quick play. It's not comp. But yeah, I'll try it. I'll try it. I'm willing to give everything, anything a try. Five centimeters. Okay, so that's that's actually a bit bigger than this model. Good. Yeah. What um what you can do, PM uh, Reaper has a YouTube. This is Reaper Miniatures channel. We have a YouTube, and every stream that I've done is on that YouTube. So if you want to see the start of a model instead of halfway through. Um, you could go and look up this model. Um, she's a dragon folk paladin and that's her number. You could go look that up on our YouTube and find the first episode and watch that if you wanted to. That might help you more. And it's, we do a bunch of figures, so you could, uh, you could look up some bigger figures too. Like, we have also done, one of the ones I really liked is this guy? He's very big. Rock troll. I'm so glad I kept him. I didn't give him to Ron. He'd just be sitting, languishing in some gallery if I'd given him to Ron. So this guy's much bigger. He is about 75 millimeters um, or uh, uh, seven and a half centimeters. But we have a start to finish video on him as well. So we have a lot. I've painted a lot of different models. And if you go and look at the YouTube, maybe you can find something that's close to what you're painting. We also, um, don't we have on the, on the Reaper Discord, we have um, playlists for many models. And I think the Reaper, I think on the Reaper Discord, and that would be, that's a free, I mean, obviously you can just join it. There's the Discord link. What, do we remember what channel the playlists are, guys? That Goddess Tio has been doing? Oh yeah, Bryce? Yeah, I don't know if I will or not. Um, I can tell David though. Is it on the reapercon.com or which website? I don't even remember how to submit stuff. I don't, I didn't get an email at all. So, or if I did, I haven't seen it. If he just sent it. Little things. It could be a little class. Oh, those aren't listed anymore because John started doing playlists. I see. And are those playlists just on the YouTube channel then? So we're doing a little bit of highlighting. Just bringing up some more highlights. Actually, I need to get closer. I zoomed out to look at the rock troll and I didn't zoom back. Yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got some class ideas written just on this little paper right by me. I can just email John and he'll tell me where to go to submit classes. Or I'll discord him. Yeah, they're not complete, huh? That's a bummer. See, I got way too bold on this particular stroke of white. And so I'm going to bring in a dark and trim it back a little. Cool. 
Welcome to Carrie. Archived on Discord, not available for user consumption. That's a bummer. It would be, yeah, that's a bummer. That was a useful resource. Hopefully John can find the time to get new ones up. I'm a little annoyed at my yellow. It's gone a little bit too weak. I needed to blend with it, but... Um, nope, I did not print this one, although Reaper uh, does 3D prints. So this, I think, was a 3D print. Hee <laughs> hee. In the... Good girl. Kiki thought she heard something. Was it somebody attacking us? Yes. Was there an axe murderer? I totally missed it, didn't I? I did. I missed it. All right, little dog. Um, but yeah, I don't print these. Reaper makes them. Um, uh, PM draw. So I buy them. I do have a 3D printer, and I have printed other mini miniatures from other companies, but not from Reaper. Reaper only sells... Um, already printed. They don't sell STLs. Though the lady that sculpted this, Christine Van Patten, she is the main, the sculptor for Moonlight Minis, and they do sell STLs. Not of the stuff she does for Reaper, but of her own things. So yes, this is a 3D print, but Reaper printed it and I bought it. So I'm sitting here trying to get these little bits to like make sense to me. I think I'm going to start putting in shadows instead of messing around with the highlights on the bottom there. You say that every day, Shadow Raven. <laughs> it's time to do. <laughs> Let this be your reminder that immediately after stream, you should send a message to Christine. She doesn't bite. I, I hope. <laughs> ah, okay. Tabletop. All oh, right. Tabletop.events conventions. Repercon. Right. I remember. It's a tabletop events site. Right, right. All right, now I can save that in a separate tab so that I can look at it afterwards. Good deal. Thanks. <laughs> Things have been weird. I get it. Things go sideways. That's an easy one, though. Sometimes I get frustrated with myself when I don't do easy stuff like that. Where it's like, seriously, Anne, it would take five minutes. But sometimes it'd be like that. Alrighty. So I'm getting in a little bit of shadow here to make the underside of that bevel darker. And that shadow kind of joins up with this little hook. And then I bring this up to highlight. So let's just concentrate on the top part there. Okay, then search for count. Thanks, Bryce. I'll pass it on to David. Yeah, see my white got too bright down here, but that's all right. We can blend we can blend it down. So boom, 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 boom. Those are our lights. And we got a, you can see the dark that I brought in right here. It's very convenient that it didn't. You're right, Wendy. I didn't think about that until you pointed it out. Maybe Bryce is just special. I mean, he is. But maybe Automod understands that. 
All right, so light's getting the darks in. Don't lose the mids. So there is, of course, a danger when you're working on really small stuff that you are going to lose your mid-tone, um, that you're going to end up with a lot of shadow and a lot of highlight and no mid-tone, which means that it's not going to look gold. So we have to make sure that we have enough gold tones in there. To still have things look gold. So by bringing in some extra yellow tones, we can still keep it gold looking. Quit hacking the bot. <laughs> Yes, yeah, they can. Some of the some of that 3D printing stuff is delicate. My favorite my favorite resin from Moonlight is really fragile. This can take a lot of blending time just to make it look right up here. Hello, dog father. <laughs> what a dumb bot. The bot was like, Anne needs this information. Okay, now we're going to be back to our normal selves. That's very silly. Either that or the bot got embarrassed that you caught it out, Quindy. So we're putting a little shadow right under our highlight here. Right, so you can see that shadow coming in. And that's kind of the transition we want right there. That's funny, very funny. Silly bot, very silly bot. So we get some golden colors in here. And of course we also have the side of the shield here. Probably you've shamed it, yes. <laughs> Machines and Italians. <laughs> I feel like it's less fighting with them and more wrangling, attempting to wrangle. So a little bit of edging there to, to kind of see how that looks. It is a bit much. Oh, good, PM. Excellent. Hopefully you can find some things on there. At least with this model, it won't be that long ago that we started it, so it should be easy to find with the search. But um, we work on a different model every day here. And we have a six model rotation, so we um, do one through six, and then we loop back around to number one, and eventually we get everything done. Unless I just decide I hate a model and I don't finish it, which happens very infrequently, but it happens. Okay, so we've got the top part of this looking good now. This is still, the edging here is still, I think, a little bit too much. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my rich leather, which is pretty transparent, and I'm gonna paint a little bit over the sides of that to dull it down a little. There. Attempting. <laughs> There we go. We also don't, we also do things like basing, doing bases, PM. Like we've been working on this one. This is the one we work on tomorrow. So we should finish it tomorrow. I'm just putting the slow, the, the snow in. Um, so otherwise she's, she's pretty much done. 
I like her. We did the fire last time, I think. But yeah, so I have to finish the rest of the snow, putting the rest of the snow on the base. I think I think we're going to call her done. She, we've been working on Corindra for a long time. Both. Both PM. Both hobby and job. I do some things for myself on my own stream on Saturdays, like this dragon bust. Crystal dragon. He's pretty cool. Um, and then I uh, paint with my husband on occasion, and uh, and then I do this for a job, and my Patreon is also a job. Yeah, I need some icicles, I know. Will Corindra be at ReaperCon? Yeah, probably, because I'll be handing her off to Ron. Yeah, I've been painting for a very long time, PM. Um, painting competitively for about, gosh, what year is it? Over 20 years now. And uh, selling my work for almost 30 years now. Although these days I do teaching for money. I do the Patreon um, instead of doing commissions. Commissions are just not my kind of thing. But yeah, I still paint for fun a little bit. Sometimes I have to take a break just because when you do it for work and you do it for your hobby, it can you can get a little burned out. But I still enjoy doing it. And I really love teaching it. Selling my soul. Yes. If, if my soul wants to go out and teach the world about mini painting, I'm all for it, Bryce. I'm all for it. This lifestyle very much suits me. Alrighty, I need to... 60s today, wow. Yeah, your plants must be confused. Yes, if you use uh, the Reaper paint, which is the MSP, I made that line, I created it, I mixed it by hand for 17 years, 16 years, I guess. The first year it wasn't in production. I feel like I need more dark here. With these big wide areas, Sometimes you won't be able to just do it all light. Sometimes you need to in introduce its own little dark and light cycle. So putting a little bit of dark in here. Oh, no barking, young lady. Kiki's very woofy lately. No matter how much you think someone evil is outside the door, Kiki, you should not bark when I'm streaming. So bringing in a bit of dark here helps break up those wings and it makes them look a little bit better. See? Oof. Yeah, HM, that's too cold. Yeah. That was the problem with those kind of shifts in Texas is stuff would start to like pop out and then the cold would like destroy it. All right. So yeah, I like those fins a lot better that way. I am going to bring in my white and do a little bit of edge. There, which is nice. Our temps are going back down into the 50s. They were in the 
We're in the 60s. I just, I miss Arizona already. Having that 80 degree day was so nice. I miss it. Super windy where you are, yeah. That's always, that's the power outage factor for us. All right, it's looking okay. We're making progress, we're making progress here. Of course, choosing to concentrate on the shield has not helped my uh, general dissatisfaction with uh, the darkness of the rest of the model. Um, but oh well, I got obsessed with the shield, what can I say? It's just, just the way it, it, I roll, I guess. It's supposed to be on and off rainy all afternoon where we are. I have a doctor appointment follow-up and then a bunch of things to do. I gotta finish my Patreon paint along videos. Oh, you're a graphic designer, huh? Oh, okay, cool. That'll that'll give you uh, kind of a yeah, one line sculpting and then paint it. Yep, yep, yeah, definitely. Yeah, digital sculpting. Yeah, Blender. Blender's a uh, um one of our one of the Reaper sculptors, Andy Peeper, uses uh, Nomad instead. He likes it. He says it's a little bit more intuitive. But I think you can do different things with them because I was looking into that sort of thing and some people like start out in one and then finish in another and so there's a bunch of those. But yeah. A lot of um a lot of people in our hobby, uh PM, start out as painters and then become sculptors because they get inspired to create their own things and that's when they pick up Blender or Nomad Sculpt. So it's absolutely something that can be done. Much bling here, much bling. Yeah, ZBrush is the industry standard, and some sculptors do use that. But it is a pain to learn. It's the general consensus. You forget you have to paint. Because <laughs> you're just sculpting. <laughs> The nice thing about the digital ones is that they can give you pre, pre-done shapes, and then you can adjust the shapes, Shadow Raven. So it takes some of that out of out of it for you. Still need to learn anatomy to make things look right, of course. But you can mess around a lot without doing that. You don't have to paint Bryce. You could just, you know, create models and sell them to the rest of us. That's a existing business model. Although, can't really, can't really win golden demons that way. <laughs> all right, so now we've got all of our shapes are starting to come out here. We are almost. Almost to the end of stream. I need to hustle today to make sure I can do everything I need to do. The last day of the month is always full of things. So we won't finish the whole shield, but we've gotten a really good start on it. Nope, 
Never. Nope, I always just painted miniatures, PM. I, uh, I work for Reaper Miniatures. That was the first, um, I, said, I worked for other companies as a freelance painter. Dark Sword Miniatures and Crocodile Games, but um, I was actually on salary at Reaper. But yeah, I was never really drawn to the, the toy um, paints. I have done a big repaint of one of my Overwatch statues, my Overwatch video game statues. But that was about, like, I don't know that I would do that every day. Oh, Kiki. Kiki, is it walk time, Kiki? Is it? Are you going to come up and see the stream? Are you going to come up and see the stream or no? No, you just want scruffles? No visitation today? No Kiki visit? All right, well, they're going to be sad that they don't get to see you. Sometimes she'll jump up on my lap. <laughs> Today doesn't even actually exist. I'm with it. I'm with you on that. Yeah, I know. I was surprised. I was somewhat surprised to find that my journal, my five-year journal, did have a day for the 29th of February. <laughs> I'm like, will it even have a day for that? It only applies every four years. I guess that means that in every five-year journal, you're going to get at least one. Uh-oh. No, no. Enough. It's not going to get you what you want faster, Keeks. Settle down. I said no. Thank you. Yeah, good girl. Yep, now settle. Aw, bummer dog father. Yeah, she's a good girl. Good girl, Keekers. She's just not wanting to jump up on my lap today. I think most people who are born on the 29th of February celebrated on the 28th. We're on Mar obviously on March 1st if they really hate being born in February. Hey, Isadora, thanks for the raid. We're actually just about at the end of this stream. 